Hello. This video is going to be about the dreaded three-week stall after bariatric surgical procedures. Say it's about three weeks ago that you had your gastric bypass or you had your sleeve. At first you were losing weight fantastically well. It was fun to get on the scale. You were losing a pound or maybe even two pounds every day and now all of a sudden four days have gone by, five days, ten days have gone by and the weight is sticking right where it is. What the heck is going on? Well, I'm going to talk about that. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio, and I'm going to talk not only about that three-week stall, which is so troublesome and concerning, but I'm going to talk about a three-month status check, and I'm going to talk about the six-month plateaus, and then work from there into the rest of life and weight maintenance after bariatric surgery. In a moment, I'll have more to say about that dreaded three-week stall, what's going on and what to do, but I want to put that three-week stall in the context of the overall typical weight loss curve for bariatric surgery. For the sleeve and the bypass, patients typically lose weight for about 12 months, give or take a couple of months after the surgical procedure. And in the first three months, that weight loss tends to be pretty brisk and mostly steady, except for the three-week stall. In the second three months, the weight loss continues to be steady, but not quite as fast. And in the remaining six months of that typical one-year time frame, the weight loss is slower, but it's still happening, and it's in the structure of what we call plateaus, which means that uh, for most patients, the weight is steady for a little while, and then it drops, and then it's steady, and then it drops kind of like in a stair-step pattern. So having said that, we're going to come back to the first of those three sections that I call the three-week stall. This is happening within one month. Now we're going to take that overall weight loss curve and we're going to focus in on the first month or six weeks where the three-week stall is happening in the middle of that weight loss curve. And at first when you're losing weight, um, the first, let's say, two or three weeks after your bariatric operation, the weight loss is really steep. It's almost fun. You can get on the scale once or twice a day. The weight's always going down, the weight's always going down, and it's like a wonderful roller coaster ride. Your weight's just cruising down, and then you get to about three weeks, and uh, you know, different for different patients, but bam, the weight loss kind of stops, and then it stays stuck for a little while. And you're like, what the heck? You know, things were so awesome a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm still doing all the right stuff, and the scale's not moving. So what's going on here? Now, in order to understand this sudden pause in the weight loss process, we're gonna have to go into a little bit of math. In the first 10 days or so, depending on where patients start, it's common to lose 10, 15, maybe even 25 pounds um, in a 10-day time span. And so the math here is that each pound of fat has 3,500 calories. So to lose, let's just say 10 pounds, you'd have to burn 35,000 calories in a 10-day time span. Now the basal metabolic rate for a large person is like 1,800 calories. Let's round it to 2,000 calories because that math is easier, okay? But 2,000 calories a day is more than just about anybody burns. And so the maximum fat that you can burn in 10 days, if you have no calories at all, is 20,000 calories, okay? So I just said that losing 10 pounds, if it was fat, would be 35,000 calories. The most you can possibly burn is 20,000 calories in a 10-day time span. And notice that I use that 10-pound weight loss in 10 days, which is kind of on the low side. People lose 20, 25 pounds. So there must be something else going on, just mathematically. What is the rest of the weight loss? Well, a lot of the weight loss is fluid loss, hydration loss. Some of this fluid loss is beneficial. Some of it is excess fluid that the patient was carrying because of their excess weight. Maybe they had some edema, maybe they had high blood pressure, what have you. But some of it is actually a little bit of dehydration. And that's going to take a little bit of explaining. The dehydration or the loss of natural fluid comes from two different categories. First of all is the body burning up glycogen. Glycogen is naturally stored mostly in the liver, a little bit in the muscles throughout the body. And glycogen is the body's quick resource for energy, so that when the body goes into a very low calorie mode, it will burn up the glycogen. Now each gram of glycogen, which again is this quick energy source, each gram of glycogen has two to three grams of water associated with it. So each gram of glycogen that gets burned sheds two or three grams of water along with it. Now that's probably not the main factor in this process that we're talking about because the total body stores for uh, glycogen run about 500 grams and probably most people deplete their glycogen during the preoperative diet. In our practice that's a seven day diet, it varies across the country. So um, that weight loss has probably already been factored in, that fluid loss has probably already been factored in before the surgery happens.
The second factor that I believe is the bigger factor that's showing up in that first two or three weeks after surgery, the rapid weight loss, is ketosis. It's natural during the rapid weight loss phase, the rapid fat burning phase, to uh, shift into a ketotic state. And ketosis involves some really significant chemical changes in your body, which are mostly good. Uh, and ketosis involves the uh, production as natural byproducts of some chemicals in the body that make you pee extra. Medically, these are called diuretics. That means that your body sheds fluid over and above what would be physiologic or natural. And so very often during this very rapid weight loss phase, the first two or three weeks after surgery, patients are actually becoming dehydrated even if they're drinking fluids well and following all the instructions. So in other words, they're taking in fluid very nicely. Um, maybe it's a little struggle, but you're getting enough fluid in. And, uh, but your body and your kidneys, driven by the chemical changes, are peeing out extra. And so that's where a lot of the weight loss comes in. And interestingly, even though it's fun to see the scale drop down and lose so much weight, a good half of our patients come back to that 10-day appointment in the two weeks, and they're tired, and they feel bad, and they get up and walk, and they run out of gas after just a few steps. And that's, I think, the ketosis and the dehydration. And it's natural at that stage to say, well, you know, because you're eating very little, to say, well, I need more fuel. I need to eat something. And um, for most practices, at one week or two weeks, it's going to be appropriate to start eating some food. But um, my experience is that eating food isn't the real thing. It's that the dehydration needs to pass or to settle down. And so you've been on this very rapid weight loss phase and then seemingly crash into the stability phase. And what's happening in that phase is that the ketosis is, is decreasing just a little bit and the uh, diuretic from the ketosis is sort of subsiding just a little bit and the body begins to catch up on its hydration. So you're continuing to drink fluids, but now you're peeing just a little bit less and you pee a bit less in a manner that's appropriate to your body. Still burning lots of fat, by the way. I want to reassure you, the goal of the surgery is still happening, eating very little, fat's going away, but you're catching up on your hydration. And since water is very heavy, uh, that makes the scale stop going down. So the scale stops going down actually as a natural recovery response of rehydration after this initial rapid weight loss and a relative dehydration. That's the key to the three-week stall. Now, it's easy for me to say that the three-week stall is all about shifts in hydration, but you're going to be living with this, and you're going to have this for two days or five days or ten days, something like that. I promise that the weight loss is going to start going down again. Guaranteed, it's going to start going down again. What to do during the three-week stall and how to shake yourself out of this. Honestly, um, this is something that's going to have to pass in its own time, and yet I do have four recommendations for you. Number one, keep hydrating. Focus on water, focus on salty fluids like broth. Um, if you like pickle juice or olive juice, those can be good things to do. Um, your team is probably also going to recommend to you things like Crystal Light or Propel um, or Popsicles. These things are fine, although I'm not a big fan of artificial sweeteners. So number one, stick with your hydration. Uh, number two, don't weigh quite as frequently. You're going to hear me later in the video start recommending that you should weigh uh, weekly rather than daily and, and certainly not multiple times a day. So try not to drive yourself crazy with getting on the scale. Number three, speaking of not driving yourself crazy, try not to compare against other people. Uh, there's so much social media and especially in the weight loss arena, it can be a good thing. But um, if you're comparing yourself against people who start at 450 pounds, they are going to lose weight faster than you. Not everybody has a terrible three-week stall, so there are going to be some people where this doesn't happen. Trust me, your situation is going to improve if you stick with the right ideas. Number four, very important, what to do about food at this time. And, and there's lots of information about there. Well, I need to eat to lose weight. I actually don't think that's true. Uh, and yet it is appropriate for most teams to move gradually into some food at this time. My message to you is that how you eat actually isn't going to affect your three-week stall, honestly. Um, it might affect how your energy level comes around, although like I said, I think hydration is more important. And my recommendation to you is to move gradually into food according to the plans that your bariatric team has given you. Don't change plans because you're concerned or you're panicking about your weight stall at this time and the weight loss will keep coming down. Okay, so that's the three-week stall and next we're going to talk about what I call the three-month status check. 
A very useful fact is that at three months from surgery, most bariatric surgery patients have lost about half of the weight that they will tend to lose at the one year mark. So if we use some simple math and we say that a person is going to lose about 100 pounds over the year after surgery, at the three month mark they will have lost approximately 50 pounds. Or if you're going to lose 200 pounds, then you will have lost about 100 pounds at that three month point. And so this is a useful, I call it a status check or a benchmark. Um, hopefully you do have an appointment with your bariatric team at approximately three months. And I think it's definitely a smart thing to visit with your um, bariatric team member at the appointment about where am I on my weight loss trajectory. Let's use this three months as an estimate about where we're going, you know, double how many pounds I've lost so far. And does that put me in a good place? And uh, one word about targets for bariatric surgery. First of all, uh, neither me nor most bariatric professionals want their surgical patients to lose all the way down to so-called ideal body weight. Um, ideal body weight is typically too skinny for people who have weighed over 200 pounds or weighed over 250 pounds or over 400 pounds in their life. Um, when you have the significant excess weight, your body takes on extra structure. Uh, it could be extra bone, it could be extra heart muscle, extra kidney, you know, to support that excess weight. And it's not healthy to lose all the way down to the ideal body weight. So set that aside. And if we were to get your body mass index to the range of 27 to 29, to 32, that's typically going to be a very healthy, sustainable weight for you over time where you'll have good energy, where you'll have normal longevity, normal health status, and, um, and normal appearance too. You People look good at this level, whereas if they get down close to ideal body weight, they look wasted or thin. Okay, so one side note about long-term goals, but you want to discuss the goals with your uh, team member. And for the vast majority of patients after their surgery, they are on track to achieve very good goals. And in that case, the thing is to just work on your habits, lock in your habits, and continue with routine follow-up. There are going to be some patients who aren't losing weight appropriately at that point. I should say really more so aren't losing weight according to the target that they have with their team member. And in those cases, you may want to intensify your treatment plan. And I'll say what intensification means in a second, but the deal is that you're at three months you're still losing weight. And if you're not happy with where you're going, it's a lot easier to change the trajectory or the path of the weight loss, okay, to make it steeper and lose weight faster than it would be at 12 months to say, okay, I'm not happy with where I am and I'm going to try to lose some more. You can lose weight at one year after your surgery, but it's pretty hard. And so it's a lot easier to intensify the plan up here. What does intensification mean? Well, for most people at three months, they're eating appropriately. And so there may be some changes in the food plan, but that's usually not where the money is. Uh, most people at three months aren't exercising as well as they could be. And so adding in some exercise, especially strength exercise to build muscle, is going to be a great idea. If you happen to be one of those uncommon patients who's not taking their vitamins at three months, vitamins seem to help with weight loss because they seem to help the metabolism and vitamins certainly are important for avoiding medical problems. And then most bariatric teams also have the option of adding in medicines, um, appetite suppressing medicines or other metabolism boosting medicines to help the surgery work well. And um, this, this type of intensification of adding in medicines uh, wasn't done commonly five or ten years ago because uh, we bariatric surgeons, we were old-fashioned. We were thinking, okay, it was either surgery or medical treatment for the weight. But now <clears throat> what we say more so is that, excuse me, now what we say more so is that uh, we're going to apply whatever treatment is safe and sustainable that's going to synergistically work to help you achieve your goal weight in a way that will last over time. At the six month mark from bariatric surgery, most patients are feeling good, they're eating a variety of foods, they're appreciating the dramatically improved health from the weight loss, and in fact for most patients, their weight already has entered a healthy sustainable range. Um, but most patients feel like they're not done with the weight loss at this point. Even if they feel good and they're healthy, uh, they want to lose more weight to kind of increase the safety margin from that uh, high level where they used to be, or they're not completely happy with their health goals, etc. And this is appropriate. Uh, the bariatric team, we want to help you with continued weight loss, and what I think is equally important with lifetime weight maintenance at this six-month time frame.
Now, for a lot of patients at the six-month time frame, there are some concerning things that may be starting to show up. Somewhere around this time, uh, patients start noticing increased food capacity. They may, may notice increased hunger a little bit, and uh, the weight loss is starting to slow down. You know, earlier we had this kind of steady curve, and now the weight loss is shifting from a steady trajectory downwards into this thing, like I've mentioned, that we call plateaus, which means that it's flat for a little while, and then it steps down, and it's flat for a longer time, and then it steps down. And for most patients, the weight loss settles uh, at about the 12-month time frame, give or take a month or three. So I definitely want to reassure you, if you feel these changes of increased capacity, a little bit more hunger, it doesn't mean your surgery is broken. It means that there's a natural fading of the power or the strength of your bariatric operation. It means that it's time for you to reinforce your conscious control of your lifestyle to work with the surgery in a sustainable way that will keep your weight at a healthy level for many, many years to come, and really, probably more importantly, to stay in a healthy metabolic balance. I have two categories of recommendations for you at this point. I have kind of core principles that I want to reinforce and some new suggestions for monitoring yourself, your weight, and your habits over time. So first of all, the core recommendations. Number one, stick with healthy food, which means low carbs, low chemicals, natural food. Number two, separate your fluids from your food. This means that you can drink up until you eat, but try not to drink with your food and try not to drink for about an hour after you finish your food. Number three, exercise regularly. Any kind of exercise is great, but strength is more important, we think. And number four, Take your supplements and stick with your follow-up. Now, that's two recommendations, but this is about sticking with your team and doing the thing that your team's doing the things that your team needs for you to do to maintain long-term health. Shifting over into the monitoring recommendations. First of all, I said it earlier, but I think it's useful to weigh yourself regularly, but just once a week. I think weighing yourself every day, especially in this longer term time frame, means that the fluid shifts are going to dominate what you see on the scale, and that can be confusing. Uh, especially women with menstrual cycles, you have crazy fluid shifts on a monthly basis. And so you can have a situation where you do a good job with your diet and exercise, uh, but the scale goes up. And it's kind of random, weight gain or uh, fluid gain. Uh, on the other hand, you can um, party and do some bad stuff for a couple days and the scale may go down. It's almost random. Uh, and this is on a daily basis. So on a weekly basis, though, you'll see reliable trends for your weight loss. And you should monitor your weight um, weekly in the long run. That's number one. Number two, this is a time for you to have some self-insight and to start to journal. And when I talk to patients about journaling, I have kind of two phases in mind. I think at the six-month time frame, it's really useful for you to do some deep journaling, extensive journaling. Um, this might be on your phone. It might be on your laptop. It might be physically written down. I don't care. This is for you. This is like your diary to yourself. And um, what I think is useful for patients at the six-month time frame is to outline what you've been doing up until this point and, and what are your goals with reference to your weight and your metabolism over time. And I think it's useful to outline, okay, how do I eat? Um, this is good. This is bad. How do I exercise? This is good. This is bad. How do I feel? Um, different relationship changes. Kind of a big deal. Um, and, and part of this is actually your message to your future self because uh, it's common for people to struggle at five years or ten years after their surgery. And um, if you struggle, by the way, you should see your bariatric team because your bariatric team should help you at that point. But um, the other thing about that time of struggle is that it's nice to have a template for you to go back to and for you to have your own plan written to yourself and your words and your life is an incredibly useful tool. So that's what that initial journaling is about. And then I recommend that you do some lesser journaling or some kind of check-in journaling on a monthly basis. Choose your own interval. It could be quarterly, it could be semi-annually. I think monthly is probably uh, more frequently a better option. And again, I have two goals here. One is that if you start seeing things slide a little bit out of control, then it's easier to update your interventions and get back on track. Uh, the other thing is that there's a self-accountability thing that happens and you can notice your trends um, in your journaling if you're starting to slide a little bit, uh, a little bit off track. The third thing on monitoring over time is I think it's great to take some pictures of yourself, especially during this weight loss phase. Uh, 
Um, and these are pictures just for yourself. Uh, and if you hopefully captured some before surgery, but you should do them monthly or quarterly or something like that in the long run. And maybe you pick the same place in your house, maybe you pick the same clothes. You don't have to do it that way, but that's a common thing. Um, there's something different about the processing that the human brain does with pictures, you know, something external objective versus looking in the mirror. Uh, and part of what I'm going after here is that I think it's very useful for you to have an accurate self image of your changes. And um, if you're just looking in the mirror, if you're just listening to other people, you're not getting an accurate self-image. So looking at these pictures uh, of yourself for your own purposes can be pretty useful. And these self-monitoring things um, you know, just help you stay on track. So all together now, that's more or less the first year of weight loss adventures after bariatric surgery. There can be some rough spots, but mostly it's a good story. And hopefully I've given you some tools to feel like you are actually in control at each step of this journey. I hope you're well.